Ladies and gentlemen, I have tricked you because this is not, that's not me, okay? This is me. You've been on my channel 10 times, we went on three dates, you told me I was handsome, we even held hands, but you still didn't subscribe to my channel. Tell me why, okay? No, it's okay. I'm doing brand new stuff here. If you wanna see this stuff in the future, it's AutoCAD 2022. We're going from the very basics of isometric 3D block modeling all the way to the advanced 3D modeling in one single playlist. So if you wanna see it, you gotta subscribe, you gotta like the videos, you gotta comment, tell me what you do and don't like. That way I can make this content perfect for you. So do me a favor, follow me on this journey. Here we go, I'll see you out there. What I wanna do is I wanna start with the basics here and I wanna go all the way through to some advanced work where you guys can add materials, textures, lighting, shadows, and you can use the visualize tab in 3D uh, in the 3D tool set in order to photo realistically render your work, okay? So we'll get there later, don't worry about that just yet. Let's talk about a couple settings. I'm in AutoCAD 2022, okay? I'm gonna go into OS Enter, that stands for Object Snap. Make sure Object Snap is turned on. The ones that I use, Endpoint, Midpoint, Center, and Intersection are good for now. Hit OK. Make sure F10 is turned on. You'll see in the command line now it says polar off. If I hit it again, it says polar on. That's what we want. Polar is a green line that follows your cursor around. Uh, if I want it to go zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and back to 360, you can change polar to do different degrees, like every 15 degrees, every 30, every 45, whatever you, whatever your heart desires, okay? But in this case, I like just using these four. Anything else, I like to use polar coordinates um, like at 10 angle 30 or something like that. You can just type that in the command line in order to get your different angles. Otherwise, I think it just snaps to too many things and I don't really uh, like that, okay? So that's F10. Uh, F11 needs to be turned on. That is object snap tracking, all right? Object snap tracking is, let's say I was drawing around and I gotta hit that again, by the way. F11 turns object snap tracking back on. Let's say that I was drawing a box here that is 10 by 15 by, you know, okay, this is a perfect example. Instead of typing 10 enter, and this is a very basic uh, situation here where you would just do 10 enter and it would be easier, but object snap tracking is where I can take this and come down on this endpoint line here and get an intersection where I can just click rather than typing any numbers or doing anything on the keyboard, it's all with the mouse, okay? So that's pretty good. Um, if I had a line or a, a edge of a wall or something like that and I wanted to start a line one inch in, I could put my cursor here and slide to the right. And as it starts counting up, I can do one enter and it will start one inch in from there. All right, so that's object snap tracking. Uh, make sure that's turned on. All right, another one is called uh, dynamic input. That is F12. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go down here to customization and make sure that, um, this is another one too, make sure line weight is checked, that's a good one. That's just gonna put that toggle down here, that way you can turn it on and off. These are a bunch of toggles, they're just on off switches. Uh, but dynamic input, make sure that one's checked, okay? The problem with dynamic input is that when you turn it on and off, it doesn't say if it's on or off in the command line, but the toggle itself, which is right here, as I hit F12, blue means on and gray means off. So if I have blue on there, you'll see that I am followed around now with two boxes. One is uh, how far you wanna go, and the other one is what degree you wanna go at. So if I click down here, it's gonna look for two numbers. Those two numbers can be like 10. I wanna go 10 inches and then I hit tab and I do 15, that's 15 degrees. So it'll go 10 at 15 degrees. I don't really like to do it this way. I think it clutters the screen, so I always turn that off, but that's up to you, F12, okay? Um, all right, so let's start drawing here. You need to know something, this is very important. This right here is your top, bottom, left, right, front, blah, 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 okay? These are the sides that you are drawing on. If I wanted to draw on the top, I'm gonna draw and change this to top. If I want to draw on the right side or the left side, you have to change that. But this is different. This is just the side that you are looking at, okay? If I wanna look at a different side of the model, I can change this uh, to any side that I want but it's only what you're looking at. This is what you're drawing on when you're actually working. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to the right side and let me explain why. Uh, in number six here, the front side is this rectangle and this square, uh, this inside piece. 
the right side is this field goal shape and the top is anything that faces up. Okay, so I'm choosing the right side on purpose here because it is the most advanced view of this 3D model. It has the curve in it, okay? It has the void that's missing and it has a void down here and a void down there that's missing. If I were to draw this in the right side, all I'd have to do is join these lines and extrude it and the model is done, okay? Uh, if I were to draw it from any other side, it's gonna take a lot more work. You're gonna have a rectangle and a square extruded at different depths. You're gonna have to move the square in to get it into the center. You're gonna have to flip to the right side anyways and draw a down, curve, up, close, join, extrude, subtract. It's a lot of work to do it from a different side. So it's very important that you choose the correct side to start with. That way it makes your life a lot easier, okay? So in this case, we're starting on the right side. We've got uh, something that is 24, 24, 20. So that's 68 by 12, 18, 12, which is 42. So 42 by 68. All right, so here we go. I'm in AutoCAD 2022. I've got my line tool and I'm gonna start anywhere with a random click. I'm gonna stay on my green polar line and type 42, enter. Then if that line does go way off the screen for you, like it looks something like this, you have to do a zoom extents. Okay, a zoom extents is gonna show you everything on the screen. It's gonna adjust your zoom level. That way you can zoom in and out. If I were to take a line here and go, let's just say like 10,000 or something, it's gonna go way off screen and it's not gonna allow me to zoom far enough out to see everything most times. So most times you won't be able to see what you're trying to do because the zoom level is a little bit different. If I uh, am super zoomed out like this and I hit zoom extents, it'll bring that right back up to my screen and then I can take my cursor. Uh, and by the way, I'm just zooming in and out with the scroller on the mouse. And then if you wanted to, you can hold down the button of the scroller and that's a pan and that will allow you to pan the entire screen. Okay, so those two things are very important. Um, so going back to my line tool, I'm actually gonna start this again here and we're gonna go line, I'm gonna start anywhere. We're gonna go 42 enter. We're then gonna go down and I think our down number was 68. I'm gonna pan a little bit and zoom out a little bit just so I can see that. I'm gonna go to the left 42 and then I'm gonna go C enter for close. Okay, now you don't have to do the close. You can just go up and snap or, you know, go up and type the 68 or whatever you wanna do, all right? Uh, now, next thing we're looking at here is how far down this circle is. It's 24 down to get to the center of that circle. So I'm gonna do an offset. Offset is your best friend. We use that all the time. Offset is basically creating a copy of a line at a specific distance. So offset, type your distance, 24, hit enter, and then you're gonna go on the top line, whatever line you wanna make a copy of, and your or offset, I should say. It's a little different than copy because copy, you can uh, copy at any specific uh, position on the screen. Whereas this is just based on where this current line is and how far away from it I wanna go and in which direction. So in this case, I'm gonna click this line and you'll see it's either gonna wanna go up or down. I want to go down and click, okay? Uh, looking at the circle size, it is an 18 diameter, diameter from one side to the other, or a nine radius. It's really the exact same thing. You can do it either way, okay? So looking at my circle tool here, I'm gonna drop this down. I've got radius diameter that I'm looking at. I'm gonna do diameter. I'm gonna click it at the midpoint and I'm gonna draw this out to be 18 diameter. Now that gives me a point right here, this intersection that I can click on with a line and draw straight up. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. I'm just snapping from one to the other. That's object snap, it's very simple. Uh, now we're looking at trim, okay? If I click trim, there are two different ways to trim. There's the old school trim and the new school trim. The new school trim is called a quick trim. So if I'm in the trim tool right now, if I hit enter, that'll make it a quick trim, okay? Um, now, this is important to mention though. In the 2021 and 2022 software, when you go into trim, you are already in a quick trim, okay? If you're in 2020 or older, then you're gonna have to hit enter to get into the quick trim. They finally wised up a little bit and changed this uh, in order to make it a little bit easier because most people will use a quick trim over a classic trim, which is using cutting edges. So let me show the difference between the two. If I did cutting edges and I click this line and then I hit enter, it's gonna wanna uh, just cut something off at that line. So that's like my scissor line and then I choose, do I want the top or bottom to be gone? 
Uh, instead of doing that, if I go into just a regular trim, I can just click whatever I want to trim and it will trim that line off. Okay, so in this case, we'll go here. We'll get rid of this line now. I am just selecting this line and hitting delete. Now, when you see me selecting, if I click and let go and I go to the left, that's a green box, obviously. And that's going to be a box that selects everything that's inside of it and everything that it's touching. If I were to start and go to the right, that's going to be a blue box, obviously, that selects only the things that are fully inside of it. So in this case, if I wanted to just get that uh, that line down curve line up, I could go like that and I'll get just those lines. Uh, it will not get the top line in this situation, but if it was a green box, it would get that top line because it is touching the edges of this boundary that I'm creating. All right. So now we're at this point. Let's go back to trim. We're in a quick trim right now. If you're in the older software, hit enter real quick and you're going to click this part right here. All right. So we're almost done here. We're looking at the bottom of this shape. OK, and I'm trying to figure out how big this notch is that I have to cut out and this notch that I have to cut out. They're going to be the same. All right. So the depth here, how far we're going to go up is 20. The width of the middle is 15, but I really need to know the width of the left and the width of the right. So take 42 subtract 15 that's 27 27 divided by 2 is 13.5 and we're going to go 13.5 by 20 okay so here we go i'm going to do another offset i'm going to go 20 and i'm going to go off of the bottom line and i'm going to go up and click then by the way i can hit escape on my keyboard to get out of that tool i hit spacebar to bring me right back in rather than going back up to the tool that's very useful uh 13.5 we're going to go 13.5 to the right and off of this right line, 13.5 to the left. Now you can do multiple offsets if it's the same distance without touching anything else. It'll just keep you in that tool. OK, so now trim. Uh, I'm in a quick trim. I am going to trim this, this, that and that. Um, I also do not want these. Now, this is a great situation where I could do a classic trim. So maybe I'll do that real quick just to show you that again. This line will go as well. If I do a quick trim here, you'll notice that these lines up here end up staying um, because it's only going to trim the part that you click on in between the two closest entities or lines. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do trim. I'm going to hit cl uh, cutting edges. I'm going to hit the edge that I want to cut at, which is this and this and hit enter. And then I'll just click above and above and it'll trim the entire part out. Now we're almost done here. OK, select everything and type join. Why do we type join? Because if you don't type join and we reset our view back to top and we go back to the bottom right corner, that's our 3D view, our default 3D view. You always have to set your view back to top and then go back to the bottom right corner. OK, so anyways, if I have these lines and they are not joined and I go to my let's see, we got a gear down here. We're going to go to 3D basics. And you probably can't see that because my mug was in the way, but um, you'll get a little menu when you hit this and it says drafting and annotation, 3D basics, 3D modeling. You're going to click on 3D basics. We're going to stick with the basic tool set for now. Uh, if I were to extrude all of these lines, you're going to get a fence look like this. And what that fence look gives you if I change my visual style to conceptual is just a hollow block model. By the way, if you don't like how the, it's below the grid right now, you could just select everything and move that up. OK, um, well, hang on. Let's do it this way. Let's select it and use this blue arrowhead and pull that above the grid. All right. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, so anyways, you're seeing a hollow thing here, and that is not what we want. We want it to be a solid. So I'm going to back up a couple steps, which, of course, is going to back me below my grid. But we're still going to move that straight back up. OK. Uh, that was just M enter, selecting everything, hitting enter again, clicking a base point and then going up on the green line and clicking. OK, you'll see now from the front view. Oh, let's go from the right view. You'll see that I am above the origin, which is your X, Y, zero, zero. If you're above that, then you are good to go. All right. So I'm going back to the top. I'm going back to the bottom right corner and I will zoom out a little bit. I'll select everything and I will join. Join takes those lines and converts them into a polyline. That polyline is something that you can extrude and then you can just type your distance. Now, what is our distance going back is 22, 22, enter, boom. 
visual style conceptual we are done how do we check this model out though we use something called orbit or instead of clicking the orbit tool and using it that way you can hold down shift on the keyboard and hold down the pan button which is your scroller button um, in order if you do both of them at the same time that'll give you your orbit as you move the mouse so hold down shift hold down the pan button you'll see orbit and then you can go like this and look around your model to make sure everything is all good this model's done. And while I have your attention, why don't I just toss this up on the screen and say, boom, like this video if you learned something, subscribe if you wanna see some more videos, or turn on the bell so that you can get a notification every single time I upload to YouTube. I appreciate you guys watching. This was a good one. We're starting with 3D1 Basics, and we're gonna get super advanced as we go on in the next 10 or so videos.